Welcome to Magical Tools for Salesforce Magicians, where we will show you tricks that would make even Pin and Teller take notice. I'm Pamela Thanawala, co-leader of Dallas Salesforce Developers Group and director of Thanawala Digital. Moyes Thanawala is a Salesforce MVP, leader of Dallas Salesforce Developers Group, and is the chief architect for Thanawala Digital. And in case you haven't figured out, we do have the same last name. We're husband and wife, just so you know. You may reach us at our Twitter handles or our email. Okay, our presentation today will center around three products that have become the center of our tools developer toolkit. First, VS Code, which started life as a Microsoft code editor and has since been released into the public domain. Second, the Force CLI, which deploys a Salesforce manipulation set on your desktop that leverages Heroku as an intermediary, and the Salesforce CLI, which is part of the Salesforce DX platform, also deployed from your computer's command line. Please take a photograph of these URLs. It is my understanding that this will be recorded and you'll be able to um, get into it. But at the same time, you might want to go ahead and take a picture if you just can't wait to get into some of these things. The first link installed the, the VS Code. The second one installs the Salesforce CLI. The third one installs the force.com CLI, and notice it leverages code stored on Heroku. Moyes will talk about that connection shortly. We won't go over installation instructions as they're pretty straightforward and easy to follow. Next slide. Once you have the three products installed, let's prepare VS Code to access the installed CLI apps. Inside of our consultancy, our, days, our devs run both the Salesforce CLI and the force.com CLI VS Code. The installation of both products in, uh, is available simply by first installing the force.com CLI and the Salesforce CLI from the URLs on the previous slide. That's why you want to make sure you have those. Number one, selecting the extensions tab in the VS Code. Two, loading the Salesforce extensions for VS Code and Salesforce CLI integration for Visual Studio Code. Also, we think it's a great idea to load the Salesforce language support, very important, which enables code highlighting and code completion. And we always want that completed. Now, Moyes, our chief architect, will go into more about how we use those and how you can use those too. Thanks, Pam. Guys, um, there's a handful of products that, that Salesforce um, has been using. And if, you, if you've been a dev for a few years, uh, you've been using the Eclipse product as your kind of command center for your dev work. Um, there's been a little bit of dissonance in, uh, in, in the change f away from Eclipse. Uh, first it was supported, then they uh, stopped support, then they renewed support for it. Recently, as, as recently as February of this year, Salesforce is making a concerted effort to say, we've stopped work on Eclipse. If you're going to continue doing dev work on a platform, the platform that we're supporting is VS Code. And there's a couple of reasons for that. And I'll go over both of those in a minute. I, this session is not, per, is not about VS Code, but VS Code is, um, is, a, is a center to a number of things that we do internally inside our dev shop. So we use VS Code as our command center, not only for, for the developers in our company, but but um, also for administration. You'll see in a moment that there are some tools that are available in VS Code that make, um, that make um, uh, data handling superior uh, as well, and a couple of CLI items as well. I'll go over those in a minute. So um, 
there's a little bit of confusion in, in, um, in the dev community about the CLIs that are available uh, to connect up to Salesforce, right? There's the Salesforce CLI itself, um, which is reasonably new. Um, I think I, I originally heard about it a couple of years ago. Um, there's some challenge to using that right now. It's a product that's still in its early stages, in its infancy. And so we're finding that uh, if we have access to a scratch org or, or the, the uh, org that we are in has implemented or enabled scratch orgs, then we're able to, to use the Salesforce CLI extremely well. But our day-to-day -day operation still uh, revolves around another CLI, which uh, originally came to be known as the force.com CLI. And still, I, I think a lot of people use that term. Um, and the way to load that, uh, you, you actually have two different command sets, one for the SFDX CLI, which is the Salesforce CLI, and then the other one is the force.com CLI. Inside of, um, inside of the uh, VS Code module, you can load force.com or something that's awfully close to it by, by requesting force code. And I'll show that to you right away. Uh, let me... So in VS Code, <clears throat> you can, you can uh, install a number of extensions. And I think this is one of the reasons that Salesforce decided that VS Code was going to be their platform of choice. It's because of the extensibility. And uh, the Salesforce CLI connects through the uh, extensions capability on VS Code, and so does the force.com. John Nelson uh, has, an, has this force code uh, CLI uh, connector that we really, really like. And it's, the way to, to install it is to click on the extensions and, uh, and type in force code. We really like that uh, capability, and we actually like that, um, that extension as well. In addition to that, let me go back to my slides. In addition to that, the other confusion that we find in the industry is, well, we understand how to set up VS Code, right? That it's fairly, fairly nicely detailed. And, and we kind of understand how to set up Salesforce on its own, and we kind of understand how to set up the CLI on its own once we understand the difference between the force.com co, force CLI and the Salesforce CLI. But what becomes a little bit challenging is, well, once I've got all of that, how do I set up a project for Salesforce inside of uh, VS Code? This is the connection that I think uh, presents the biggest problem if you're new to VS Code. And the way to do that, the way, the, the way we do it and, and find the, the greatest uh, capability is to drop in to the command shell once you've got your uh, CLI loaded and then use the force.com uh, force CLI command set. Let me show that, show that to you. Right. Once you. Once you install the force.com CLI, and I'm not going to go into the installation of that, right? We'd be here forever. You get a command set that's quite robust, right? You start out by simply typing in force-h, and you'll see that here's your login capability. Uh, the logins tells you all the orgs that you're lo logged into. Right. You can only have one primary login, but basically you can log into multiple orgs and then keep switching between them. We find this really, really advantageous because we do our dev work in one of, one of you know, 15 different uh, dev orgs, and then we can instantly switch and look at another dev org or look at our UAT, UAT org without logging in again. So you can log in, you can have multiple logins, and here's your entire set of commands. The other advantage of logging in in this manner is that um, you don't have to s store your uh, username and password here. 
as soon as you say force login, it pops open a window and you log in as you normally would using OAuth, right? So fairly straightforward, really wonderful. Now, if you take one thing away from here, it's how to, to back up your entire org, how to bring it in to your computer, everything, right? All, not your data, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say everything. Your entire metadata, uh, or a subset, source code, workflows, how do you do that? How do you do that in one command? Well, we do that from uh, the command shell. Again, if you've installed force.com, force uh, the CLI for force.com, it is that. Okay. So six months ago, that brought in everything except Aura. Today, it brings it all in. It brings in all your Aura extensions and uh, um, uh, your um, lightning components, all the code within your lightning components, uh, the whole bit, simply by doing this. And it sets it up in a substructure for you. So each one of those has a structure underneath whatever directory you're running it. Now, Again, I'm not going to do this. This takes, depending on the size of your org, can take up to 20 minutes. I've, I've seen, you know, 20 minutes to download these things, right? Now, <clears throat> once you do that, and you've got that in your, in your, uh, on your computer, you can go back to VS Code. And let me pull up my VS Code here, right? And this is what you'll see. You'll see the your entire org, you'll see that Aura has been brought in. Uh, all your classes are here, right? Uh, all your workflows, your triggers are here as well, your workflows are as well. I really like this. I like it on, on two different uh, accounts, right? One is that without a tool like this, it's very difficult to be confident that you've backed up your whole org, that you've brought everything somewhere that you can, you can store uh, away from, uh, from the cloud. But secondly, if you're a developer, or even if you're an admin, and you're running into a problem of the type, something strange is happening in my org, right? Uh, my code is running, it's setting up a variable correctly, but when I actually run it in production, something else is happening. The, 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 there's something that I can't track down. Once you bring your data into VS Code in this manner, right? use your CLI to download your, your org, and then jump back into VS Code and look in that file, look in that project. Right? You can run uh, a search across the entire uh, org. Right? You do a find in all files, and it'll search not only your source code, but across your workflows, formula fields, that sort of thing. I really like that. I think that that in the, in the moment gives you tremendous capability. I'm going to rush a little bit, simply because I've only got six minutes uh, to go. I want to show you one additional tool uh, that I haven't shown you yet. And that is Cloudingo Studio. Cloudingo Studio uh, isn't talked about much. It's a free download. Um, a Salesforce MVP and his team uh, at Cloudingo. <laughs> I'm sorry, the company name is not Cloudingo. The, the company name is uh, Symphonic Source. This is a free download from their site. They use it internally. And I'll show you the power of this. This is a data tool. And admins pay attention as well. I'm an old time computer science major back in the 80s, and so I grew up with SQL. And, and I find that there are some commands in SQL that are not available in Salesforce, and it drives me nuts, right? The thing I like about SQL is I can, I can get every field I want by putting in an asterisk, right? Select star. Have you ever wanted to do that? Select star from account, right? 7-Eleven guys want to, want to do that a bunch. Watch this. Select star from account, right? 
Let me change that to limit three and run that for you. And look what it brought back. Every single field inside of, inside of account. Custom fields, standard fields. This to me is the single most powerful tool that we have in our arsenal. The ability of not having to go back and find all the fields that exist on an object, come back and do a select ID, comma, name, comma, you know, whatever. Select star from whatever object you want, including custom objects. Um, this is a free product that's available. I'll show you a slide where you can download this product. Uh, but I really like this. Along the left-hand side as well, uh, every object in your org, and then within that object, you click on that and you've got every field available to you. Again, the metadata in your organization. This tool is great not only for developers, but if you're an admin and you kind of quickly want to connect up to your org uh, and figure out what's going on, right? So this is the, another tool that we like a lot. Now, we talked a little bit about what's happening in my org, right? Um, when you have a challenge of the type, uh, we talked about it a moment ago, hey, something is going wrong, how do I find it? Uh, VS Code, I think, is, is the ideal place to, to do that. Uh, run across your metadata. Let me do that for you and show you uh, how, how we do that. It's a fairly straightforward thing to do. Uh, where is my VS Code? My VS Code closed down. There it is. Whatever variable across your entire org, this is as simple as it is, right? The other thing that I, I'd like to show you is some of the other um, tools that we haven't talked about, but it's growing at an exponential rate. The sheer number of plugins that are available for VS Code is staggering. We've only looked at two today. We've looked at the Salesforce uh, plugin, um, and we've looked at the force.com plugin. But the number of plugins that are available, just, just a couple of months ago, the number on this list was half the size it is right now. So I would definitely suggest that you go look at that. And then finally, I do want to show you, oh, again, the backup capability. Guys, this is, this is awesome. You, you can bring your entire org directly into VS Code, and then once it's there, you have source control. You can, when you get in it the first time, right? When you get in it your project the first time, it takes everything that you've brought in, and it starts your your GitHub project or your any uh, version control that you want. This is a native VS Code capability. So again, this is great because you can archive your org in this manner as well. Bring your code in. If tomorrow morning it changes, right? One of the big challenges of Salesforce is what, right? We try and, and use source control uh, on our orgs, but somebody goes into our org and then sets up a new field, right? And they completely bypassed our, our, uh, our version control system. So one of the things we do is every morning we just bring in the entire org and we do a diff inside of VS Code, and any changes that we see, we go ahead and push back into Git. Again, directly from inside of VS Code, the CLI, the Salesforce CLI, and Git control. And of course, you can use sticky notes. Finally, guys, here's a list of uh, URLs. Um, if, you, if you've got your camera, Take a, take a shot of this. We are going to post the slides 
so you can, you can pick it up that way. But here's what we find internally. We love these URLs. They keep, uh, they keep their data updated, and, um, and, and I think it's, it's something worth uh, visiting. Uh, we'll be around here for any additional questions, but I've run out of time. <laughs> so if you want to come up and ask questions, by all means, do that. We'll, we'll hang around for a few more minutes. Thank you for your time, guys.